like to uh, welcome all of you here and introduce you to Helene Rose Chagas de Gentili. She's an herbalist and iridologist. Helene's a practicing folk healer in Curandera and a master herbalist in the cultural fields of Mexican and American folk medicine. Helene shares years of wisdom and knowledge from over 20 years of practice. She's worked with uh, doctors, chiropractors, and nurses throughout Southern California. And she's also the healer for the Mor Morocco Indian tribe. So let's welcome Helene. Thank you so much. Um, it's so funny how the book parallels with my life so much too at the same time because I was, I was trained by my great grandmother. Um, I was raised and born and raised actually in East Los Angeles at the Japanese Memorial Hospital in East LA. And I was um, raised with Pico Rivera and La Mirada area, but I spend all my time mainly in East Los Angeles, with, um, staying with my great grandmother. My great grandmother was a curandera total. A total basically is a total healer. Most people think of curanderismo as like brujeria or santissimo, which is a total different entity than um, right from curanderismo. Mine is more like like uh, we do. I do something we call like platicas, where we do counseling, and that's part of like the, um, what, what I do. My great grandma also did. I'm a sobadora and a yebe. So I do counseling, massage, and I base and I do um, uh, herbalism. I practice all those three. My great grandmother was a spiritual. She basically did a lot of spiritual healing and prayer and blessings. And then she also was uh, this did uh, was a quartera, which means that she birthed babies. Mm -hmm. And then I do some aspects of um, I, I, I can turn a baby, or and I do I, I fix the huesos and my masera. I do um, certain things uh, like that. Our work is mainly an oral tradition. You're taught by somebody in the family who is a curandera, or if you're chosen for the particular field, you're chosen for that particular field uh, according to your compassion. Um, and your deep relationship with your spirituality or God, and also in the connection with the earth. And usually, um, a healer can, can usually sense that. I actually have practices of my own that I acquired, and this is Robert Luna. Um, he's the boy in the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing the parallels. So my family's name is Chavez. There's a Chavez family in there, too. So at the Chavez is everywhere in Mexico, anyway. And then um, this is my this is the mighty pool over here. He's also one of our my apprentices. He um, is working on tonics, and he's um, in fact he's now learning to the beginning aspect of getting to know the herbs, getting to know the personalities, and getting to know the qualities. One thing about herbalism, it's a very passionate field to be in. Hi, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very passionate field to be in. You have to be so connected to the earth and then you actually work with herbalism when you walk to the forest and you actually every single place that you walk into has got a personality of its own every I, I do um, more of mountain herbalism my great, my great grandmother was a desert herbalist she did a lot of um, desert herbalism um, she taught me to speak English fluently because is if you are now living in a certain area you have to embrace the culture and you have to embrace the language and by doing that, you have a connection with the earth that you are embedded in or rooted in now. And we always take with us the ancient sort of the information that we have from the past and all the information that was given to us. And that is part of a culture we take with us, but we have to grow and change because the earth grows and changes all the time. Even our herbs change and adapt to our environment. So even like right now, we have a swine flu, but right now a certain herb, which is called lomadium, is now getting to be structurally more powerful to help overcome the damage that we actually cause to the earth. So the, the, the plants adapt along with it, along with this ease of the, of the system. One thing about the body, mind, and spirit aspect of it, and I, I, got, this, I got a really wonderful uh, analogy from one of my, one of my, um, like my apprentices also, is about how the perfect balance, and talk about the sun, how, how much larger it is than the earth and the moon. And then the Earth basically, and the Moon runs in its own particular cycle. And isn't it amazing that at one day, have you ever seen a, a full solar eclipse? How huge that Sun is, and all of a sudden the Moon will pass in front of it. And the power that it brings to the tides, but you can actually, when that happens, and the, the Moon totally covers the Sun, it also separates 
all the spectrum of color. So when you look at your shadows on the, on the ground, you'll see like little fingers of red and blue and yellow and green and, and all these incredible colors. That how the energy just totally changes. When you know, I can only imagine how the Aztecs felt when the when the sun was totally covered. And then also the Earth, when it's a perfect synchronization, will cover and overshadow the moon. Body, mind, and spirit. When we work with the body itself, we work with, when we talk about what doctors do, doctors work with the physical, and they work with the biology of the human body. If you get into naturopathic medicine, they work with those two, and they add the environmental along with it. In curandrismo, there are five elements of healing. The two that I, put into my medicine is spirituality and emotion. We believe that every single organ in the body has emotion to it. Like the liver is, it we call it, it's a disease called bilis. And bilis is basically, is excess liver bile that comes up, anger, resentment. Mm -hmm. And then on this side is the spleen, and that's basically this pensiveness. This is part of the renal system part of the kidneys, the adrenals, the urinary bladder. So people, they get scared, they, 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 they go to the bathroom themselves. And then they just, they, they, they pee on themselves, basically. And that's pensiveness. That's waiting for the shoe to drop. Lungs is grief. The heart and the thymus is joy. And we work with every single, we, we, when I've talked with the clients, I've learned about 42 different forms of diagnosis. I can, the way you walk in the door, um, the way you hold your purse, by the way you look at me by your energy, even when you walk into their room, your energy can be uplifted or it can be lowered. And that, you, that you can actually feel it. We've learned to not be so intuitive. We learn not to listen to our body's voices. We learn to have doctors basically tell us what our bodies are doing and they, they actually close off our own voice. We have a lot of women that have hormonal issues because they lose their voice. They lose the ability to express their needs. They say what they want immediately, but it doesn't mean that it's what they need. And they can actually lower their own hormones by doing that and um, taking away their body them in because they, they choke their, their own voice off. That's a thyroid issue. The thyroid issues come with anxiety. It comes with depression. It comes with, um, we call, if you get a piece of susto. Have you ever, have you ever heard of a, um, a term called susto? Mm -hmm. in, the, in, the old, in the old days, it was believed that you were hit so hard that your body got knocked, your, your, your insides got knocked out of your body and you're walking around basically you know, in days, and it was called, it was called soul loss. And then um, there's also terms that we use called soul retrieval. And that's what the doctors are <coughs> for, we talk about, you know, when this happened, what emotionally happened, and so I really get into the emotional work, which is the next subject of, which I get into, which is why I really believe in iridology, or we call the hair of the eye. And the hair of the eye is something my great-grandma used to read about 10 different forms of the hair of the eye, and I became interested in iridology about six years ago. What's incredible about iridology is that I can, you can actually look into the iris and you can find out if your emotions are making you sick or if your sickness is making you emotional. There's one portion of the eye called the rayet, which is, there's the, the iris and the pupil, the iris and the pupil. And then around here, and it, it forks up on top, and that's called the rayet, and that is you as a person. The center has an animation lifeline right in the middle. If you were, if you were beaten as a child or someone hurt you, when you were little, it would be like a little scar there, an encapsulated scar. If it's open, like an open lesion, that means it happened recently and it's still continuing to affect your, your whole being and your whole psyche. And there's other ish, other areas around next to it that affects your self-esteem. It makes you angry. There's other little lines involved with it too. So I, I can read, <coughs> you can literally see your soul through your eye. It's amazing. You can see if your organs are deteriorated over time. You can see if you inherited your dad's bad heart or your mm -hmm. mom's weak kidneys. You can see everything in the, in the eye. And the sclera is even um, more exciting because I can see what's happening right now. You know, immediately. Like, if, uh, if you ever notice that, you know, upset somebody and they start to cry. And it gets really red here and really red here. This is the hard emotional lines. You broke my heart. And this line, you hurt my feelings. And then you cry. And you can always find those things out in the eyes.